Danvers. Prodigal child of the Milky Way. Nick Fury. My favorite one-eyed man of intrigue. How goes it out there? Uh, you know, cold, no air, space. Today, let's explore the aftermath of Disney's latest disaster, the Marvels, and how it's exposing some harsh truths about Hollywood's pondering tactics. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Please, let's not harass the poor journalists who've already endured watching the Marvels. They've suffered enough. So, what's the fallout from 10 years of feminist content from Hollywood? Well, it's a classic case of telling men not to watch, then blaming them when it fails. Sound familiar? Think back to the Charlie's Angels remake. Green Rant's journalist is quick to point fingers at men for the Marvels' failure, conveniently ignoring Hollywood's missteps. It's crucial to understand that the success of any product or content is deeply intertwined with its target audience. In the case of industries like gaming and movies, demographics play a pivotal role in shaping the content and marketing strategies. Just as makeup stores predominantly cater to women because they are their primary consumer base, Marvel movies have historically targeted male audiences. This isn't a manifestation of sexism, but rather a strategic understanding of the market. For decades, Marvel comics and their cinematic adaptations have resonated with a predominantly male audience. The themes, characters, and storytelling style have been tailored to appeal to the interests and preferences of this demographic. From action-packed superhero battles to complex narratives, these movies have captured the imagination of millions of male fans worldwide. Understanding the primary demographic is essential for any industry to thrive. It allows businesses to tailor their products and marketing efforts effectively, maximizing their chances of success. In the case of Marvel movies, the filmmakers and studio executives are acutely aware of their core audience, predominantly male viewers who enjoy action-packed adventures and superhero narratives. However, this doesn't mean that women aren't interested in Marvel movies or that they are excluded from the audience entirely. On the contrary, many women are avid fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and enjoy its diverse range of characters and stories. Acknowledging the primary demographic of industries like gaming and movies is not about perpetuating sexism, but rather about understanding consumer behavior and preferences. By recognizing and catering to the interests of their core audience, businesses can create content that resonates deeply and fosters a loyal fan base. This nuanced understanding is crucial for navigating the complex landscape of entertainment and ensuring long-term success. Now, let's debunk some myths. The assertion that men are the primary critics of the Marvels is not only oversimplified, but also overlooks the intricate dynamics of audience preferences in the entertainment industry. While it's true that there may be some male viewers who have voiced their dissatisfaction with the film, attributing its failure solely to male criticism ignores a more nuanced reality. The success or failure of a movie is rarely a result of one demographic's opinion alone. To illustrate this point, consider the highest grossing movie, Barbie, which was made specifically with a female audience in mind. Unlike the Marvels, which attempted to shift its target audience to middle-aged women, Barbie embraced its core demographic from the outset. The film understood the interests, desires, and preferences of its audience and delivered a product tailored to their expectations. The success of Barbie underscores the importance of knowing one's audience and catering to their specific needs and interests. By aligning the content of the movie with the expectations of its target demographic, the filmmakers were able to create a product that resonated deeply with its intended audience. This strategic approach not only resulted in financial success, but also cultivated a loyal fanbase that felt seen and represented on screen. In contrast, the Marvels attempted to appeal to a different demographic without fully understanding their interests and preferences. The film's failure to connect with its target audience highlights the importance of authenticity and genuine engagement in storytelling. Ultimately, the success of Barbie and the failure of the Marvels serve as valuable lessons for the entertainment industry. Knowing one's audience, understanding their needs, and delivering content that resonates with them are essential elements of creating successful and impactful movies. By embracing these principles, filmmakers can create content that not only entertains, but also resonates deeply with audiences, regardless of their demographic. When discussing the failure of the Marvels, it's crucial to delve deeper into the root cause beyond just the representation of women in movies. While diversity and inclusion are important aspects of modern filmmaking, 
the issue with The Marvels lies not only in its attempt to showcase female characters, but in its misguided approach to pandering to a different demographic. The film's failure is not a result of women being portrayed as superheroes, but rather in its attempt to shift its core audience from boys to middle-aged women. This shift in target demographic reflects a fundamental misunderstanding of audience preferences and highlights the dangers of pandering to perceived societal trends rather than staying true to the essence of the franchise. Audiences, regardless of gender, are drawn to compelling characters and engaging storytelling. By attempting to cater exclusively to middle-aged women, the Marvels alienated its existing fanbase while failing to resonate with its intended audience. The result was a film that lacked the authenticity and genuine connection that are essential for success in the highly competitive entertainment industry. Moreover, the suggestion that women can only be drawn to movies featuring strong male characters and topless men is not only reductive but also reinforces harmful stereotypes. Women are just as capable of enjoying diverse and nuanced storytelling as men, and their interests cannot be reduced to simplistic tropes. Instead of pandering to perceived gender preferences, filmmakers should focus on creating inclusive and authentic narratives that resonate with a wide range of audiences. By embracing diversity and representation in a genuine and meaningful way, movies can appeal to viewers of all backgrounds and demographics, fostering a more inclusive and enriching cinematic landscape. The argument that Captain Marvel made a billion dollars at the box office is often used to counter criticism of the Marvels, but it's important to contextualize that success. Captain Marvel was released in the wake of Avengers Infinity War and served as a bridge between that film and Avengers Endgame two of the most highly anticipated movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The hype and anticipation surrounding the conclusion of the Infinity Saga undoubtedly contributed to Captain Marvel's success, as audiences were eager for any hints or clues about the fate of their favorite characters. However, the Marvels lacks that same momentum and built-in anticipation. It doesn't have the benefit of being a crucial piece of the overarching MCU narrative or following directly on the heels of a major event like Infinity War. Without that built-in hype, the film has struggled to generate the same level of excitement and engagement from audiences. Despite the clear signs of trouble, Disney's plan for the future of the MCU appears to be more of the same. CEO Bob Eager's admission that the company lost focus is telling, but the response seems to be doubling down on existing strategies rather than course correcting. With only Deadpool 3 slated for release in 2024, the decision to continue down the same path raises questions about Disney's ability to adapt and innovate in response to changing audience preferences, and market dynamics. Instead of taking a step back to reassess and reevaluate their approach, Disney seems content to forge ahead with businesses as usual potentially setting themselves up for further disappointment and failure. Shifting gears from the turmoil within Disney's cinematic universe, a seemingly unrelated yet equally absurd controversy has emerged within the realm of ornithology, the study of birds. The American Ornithological Society has sparked outrage by announcing plans to rename certain bird species, including the Cooper's Hawk, Stellar Jay, Wilson's Wobbler, and Anna's Hummingbird. The controversy surrounding bird names serves as a stark reminder of the current climate of political correctedness and identity politics. While the intention may be to promote inclusivity and sensitivity, the decision to rename bird species based on the race of the individuals who discovered them is both misguided and absurd. It underscores the dangers of prioritizing symbolic gestures of inclusivity over tangible actions that address systematic issues of inequality and discrimination. In a world world where genuine issues of social justice and equity demand attention, expending energy on renaming birds only serves to distract from more pressing matters. The Marvels flopped, Bob Iger's out of touch, and birds are now racist. It's a wild world out there. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing, and remember to share your thoughts in the comment section below.